download and upload more than ever before with an ultra fast fiber connection. With three simple steps, you can be the one with an SLT fiber optic connection. Visit slt.lk. Taking a stance, a date has been set to implement the death penalty. Meanwhile, silent protests held by the Catholic Church over illicit drugs. Working together, President of VSL says the delay in hearing court cases must be addressed. Should collectively make every effort to identify the root causes and make an effort to eradicate delay in the interest of justice. Caught red-handed, Sri Lankan test captain Dimut Karnaratna arrested for driving under the influence. SLC to conduct inquiry. Miami Open. Australia's Ashley Barty emerged victorious at the women's finals. Secure slot in the top 10 women's ranking. All this and much more coming your way on First at 9 this Sunday, the 31st of March 2019. From Adha Verana, this is Adha Verana First at 9. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Well, a very good evening and welcome to First at 9, Nalandarana 24, Sri Lanka's news channel. I'm Katrina Chang. Now, expressing concern over the alarming use of narcotics in the country, President Maithipala Sirisena says that he has already decided the date to implement the death penalty on those already convicted for drug offences. He made this remark during the mass protest staged by religious leaders led by Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Carnell Ranjit against a drug menace in Sri Lanka. People who destroy the lives of children by spreading illicit drugs among them have forgotten that their lives too will end one day. Parents should keep a close watch on their children and should be aware of who they associate to ensure that they don't fall prey to the drug menace. It is our duty to take legal action over those people who try to earn money by spreading these illicit drugs among children. We should also reject politicians and people who support the influx of these narcotics into the country. <laughs> Following the Holy Mass, a silent protest was organized by the Thudella Church in Jaila against the drug menace prevalent in the country. Meanwhile, several other protests were held across the island, which saw the participation of area residents and the Mahasangha. <laughs> Meanwhile, a mass protest was also staged in Modra this evening, which saw the participation of the religious leaders, including the Archbishop of Colombo, the President and the Prime Minister. Even though there are people who use narcotics in developed societies, they are not as degenerated as our society. In fact, they have not allowed their society to be destroyed by drugs because they use modern technology to destroy illicit drugs. Due to this menace prevalent in the country, we strengthen the law and we will continue to do so. We will implement severe punishment and we will implement capital punishment and I have already decided dates regarding the execution. To build a better society, a country should have laws and they should be enforced. Punishments should be there and they should be implemented. We will burn and destroy a ton of illicit drugs tomorrow in the presence of a judge and state officials. Amid growing fears that Sri Lanka is turning into a transit hub for the regional illicit drug trade, Defence Secretary Hem Siri Fernando says that eradicating the drug menace is a far more difficult operation than the three decades of the civil war. Speak an event held in Colombia yesterday, the Defence Secretary went on to say that a new program will be implemented to put an end to the drug menace in the country. Secretary of Defence Hema Siri Fernando participated in the closing ceremony of the 82nd Police Athletic Mate at Bambalapitiya Police Field Force headquarters yesterday. All of you are aware that we fought a monstrous war for 30 years. But I would like to say that even you would question as to what the 30-year war is when taking into consideration the battle ahead against the drug menace. No leader in the history of Sri Lanka had courage to take action to eradicate the drug menace apart from our president. We will soon implement a program to eradicate narcotics from the country. 
Premier President Maitipala Sirisen highlighted the need for continued maintenance and management of public services. Speak an event held in Colombo this evening, the President says that it is up to the public and state sector officials to ensure that physical resources are looked after. The Kurtavama Kumbura Multimodal Transport Center, the first of its kind in Sri Lanka, was declared open by President Maitripala Sirisena this evening. The Multimodal Transport Center provided access for passengers to connect among transport modes. The Minister of Megapolis and Western Development was formed by our government based upon a new concept. The Ministry engaged in a considerable number of development projects in urban areas during last four years. The problems we face with these new constructions are the maintenance and the management of these institutions. This multimodal centre is an important step on improving the public transport system with new technology. In other words, this strengthens the common services for the public. Previous government had implemented only very few projects on public transport service. I believe Sri Lanka Railways is the poorest railway service in this region. There are many reasons for this. Therefore, when the government takes leadership on development activities, maintenance and the management of these physical resources should be carried out by the general public and the state sector officials. President of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, President's Council Kalangi Indithisa says that maintaining an independent judiciary and a fearless bar is of utmost importance if the legal system is to guard itself from any form of influences. Addressing a function yesterday, the President's Council highlighted that the public's confidence in the legal system can be strengthened through dialogue and a collective effort should be taken to identify the root causes for delay in serving justice. The induction ceremony of the 25th President to the Bar Association of Sri Lanka was held in Colombo yesterday. The ceremony was attended by eminent legal personalities, including Chief Justice Nalin J. Pereira and Attorney General Jayanta Jayasurya. Some recent events demonstrate that the independence of the bench and the bar has not received the full attention it deserves. While appreciating the fact that no system is perfect and that constructive criticism is important to identify the loopholes in any system, unfair, unreasonable and unjustifiable criticism should not be condoned either by the bench or by the bar. Greater vigilance ought to be shown in this regard in the future. The public expect it and the safety of our realm demands it. In recent times, a growing concern has been whether the bar has played its role in influencing public opinion. Public confidence of the judicial system and the legal profession is an extremely important aspect in modern times. It is important for us to remember that an independent judiciary and an independent and a fearless bar are the surest assurances against the scourge of any form of interference and the horrors of revolution. The Bar Association in the near future will introduce many programs for the purpose of sharing knowledge and the enhancing professional development of the members of the bar through the use of technology. For the last 30 years or more, we have continuously heard of laws delays. The bench and the bar and the other agencies involved should collectively make every effort to identify the root causes and make an effort to eradicate delay in the interest of justice. There appears to be a trend of hurrying justice. We at the bar are mindful of this issue and we do not certainly think that hurrying justice is a solution to the issue. As much as justice delayed may amount to justice denied, Justice hurried could result in justice buried. We believe that a proper dialogue through consensus, consultation and compromise would help to identify the mechanism to increase public confidence in our system. Opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksha requests the government to hold the provincial council elections first before even preparing for presidential elections. Speaking to media following an event held in Colombo yesterday, the opposition leader expressed confidence in fielding a candidate who is able to win the presidential elections. Opposition leader Mahinda Rajapaksa participated at the New Year Festival of Carlton Preschool in Maligavatta yesterday. One third of the budget is already defeated. The present government is unstable. The president and the prime minister at opposing ends are unable to take decisions. The only decision they can take together, however, is against us. Unfortunately, no decisions are taken on behalf of the country. Ask them to hold provincial council elections first. We will definitely win the elections. We will bring a candidate who can win the elections. 
Meanwhile, the opposition leader participated at a religious function held at Naluvela in Balangoda today. Despite the prevailing hot weather conditions, we are faced with a daily power cut. Some areas are experiencing a water cut. They do not know how to manage. Their only intention is to get their commission. Ruling politicians are unable to empathize with the suffering of the common people. When talking about the place given to Buddhism, nowhere in the proposed constitution does it mention the term Buddhism, but rather religion. They are trying to cheat the whole nation. UMP MP Field Marshal Sarat Fonseca says that Prime Minister Rana Vikram Singh should be nominated as the party's presidential candidate. Speaking to media following an event in Kalanir today, he went on to say that there is no other suitable person within the UMP who is capable to contest in the presidential election. I'm certain that the next presidential candidate will be from the Rajapaksha family. Just because one of their family members are contesting, it does not mean it will be an issue to the United National Party, who defeated them once before. The only sticking point would be the possibility of Gotabe Rajapaksha being imprisoned before the presidential election. Apart from this, I do not see any other problem. If you take a look at the number of cases filed against him, my gut feeling says that he is undoubtedly connected to corruption and fraud. We will not repeat the same mistake of casting aside the leadership during the elections and nominating others to rule. It is the Prime Minister who should be nominated as the next candidate. If this is the case, then there should be someone more capable than him. I do not see anyone who can fill his role. My personal view is that I do not see a situation where Ranil Vikram Singh will be replaced by Karu Jayasurya. Sri Lankan Test Captain Dimut Karnaratna has been released on bail after being arrested over a drink driving case resulting in an accident. Karnaratna's vehicle collided with a three-wheeler early this morning. The three-wheeler driver of the, uh, of the vehicle sustained minor injuries in the incident. Karnaratna has been summoned to Halfstorff Magistrates Court uh, tomorrow on charges of drunk driving and being unable to avoid a collision. Releasing a statement over the matter, Sri Lanka Cricket said it will follow the due process as per Karnaratna's clear contractual obligation and conduct an inquiry into in order to take necessary action. The funeral of Vajra Srimati Disanayaka, wife of late Minister Gavan Disanayaka, was held in Colombo today. Bajir Srimati Disanayaka, wife of late Minister Gamini Disanayaka and mother to Minister Navin Disanayaka and MP Mayata Disanayaka was held at their residence in Colombo today. A number of politicians and prominent personalities were seen paying their last respects. <laughs> Meanwhile, the funeral of veteran singer and artist Angeline Gunatilaka was held today. The final rites will take place at the Borala Public Cemetery on the 2nd of April. Sri Lanka's number one radio station, Daran FM, has created millionaires through Daran Radio Nidhania over the past years. But for the first time in Sri Lanka's radio history, a grand prize of 10 million rupees was given to a lucky winner through FM Daran Koti Patiwarama. K.S. Sankar, resident from Helagama in Akurasa, walked away a millionaire this morning as he was selected among thousands of listeners who took part for the competition held in line with FM Darana's 10th anniversary. Apart from the grand prize, home appliances, property, lorries, tractors, electronic items and motor vehicle bicycles were among host of other gifts distributed to several lucky winners at the competition. Meanwhile, our humanitarian initiative Manasad Darana conducted its 41st mobile clinic at Karuvalagaswava in Putlam today. 
The clinic was held with the aim of diagnosing kidney disease and raise awareness on the issue. Those who attended the program were given a free diagnosis of where urine and blood tests were done free of charge. Representatives from the Office of uh, Madam Pei, Health Services Director's Office, Sri Lanka Army, Sri Lanka Optometric Association, Sedum Laboratories, Leeson's Hospital, Octane Private Limited, Piotech Lanka, George Stewart Health, Nipuna Rice and Nutrition Society of Sri Lanka joined hands in this humanitarian initiative. And with that, we cross over to a short commercial break, so make sure you stay tuned for more news on the other side. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel. This is Other Therana 24. The Colombo Stock Exchange and the Dhaka Stock Exchange jointly announced the, the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding to formalize collaborative efforts directed at mutual development. The MOU will pave the way for a greater level of information exchange between the two stock exchanges and will focus on product development, capacity building and the joint promotion of capital raising efforts both in Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Issuing a communique today, the Colombo Stock Exchange said the MOU is also set to contribute towards enhancing economic and business relations between Sri Lanka and Bangladesh and further enhance efforts towards capital market integration in the South Asian region. Meanwhile, analysts expect continued buying interest in the stock market with strong valuation to prevail. We now have Archidan Srirangan from First Capital Holdings with a weekly forecast. The despite the positive sentiment created with the downward shift in yield at the bill auction, secondary market is likely to witness a wait and see approach with the dealers. And ahead for the bond auction due on 2nd April and the monetary policy announcement on the 5th April. The stock market is likely to have a continued buying interest with a strong valuation prevailing in the market. We expect to see bit of foreign inflow in the stock market as the rupee also started to appreciate. North Korea has described a break-in at its embassy in Spain last month as a grave terrorism attack. In its first official comment, the government demanded an investigation and said it, clo it was closely watching rumours that the FBI had played a role. On Wednesday, a group committed to ousting North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, the Cheolima Civil Defence, said it carried out the raid. The group took computers and data and said it gave its evidence to the FBI. At least two international arrest warrants have been issued for the main suspects. A spokesman for the North uh, Foreign Ministries uh, said in a statement, quote, a grave terrorist attack occurred on February 22nd when an armed group assaulted the DPRK embassy in Spain, unquote. The UK Prime Minister May is facing a new push by members of her Conservative Party to lead Britain out of the European Union in the next few months, even if it means a potentially damaging no-deal Brexit. Conservative lawmakers urged May against a long extension of the Brexit process in a letter sent after her exit deal was rejected for a third time by the House of Commons on Friday. Foreign media uh, stated that the letter was signed by 170 of the 314 Conservative lawmakers in Parliament, including 10 Cabinet Ministers, heaping more pressure on May. On Monday, the UK Parliament will hold an indicative vote on Brexit alternatives. Labour Party's Deputy Leader Tom Watson said it would be inconceivable if there was a general election and his party did not include a new referendum in its manifesto. Following the UK's vote to leave the European Union in 2016, Theresa May negotiated a withdrawal deal with the European Union. Although European leaders agreed to the plan, May has yet to get the deal approved by Parliament. The Prime Minister has until 12th of April to seek a long extension to the Article 50 process if the United Kingdom is to avoid leaving without a deal.
Apple F Sports News up next, so make sure you stay tuned for more. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel. This is Other Therana 24. Australia's Ashley Barty claimed the biggest single title of her career so far with victory over former world number one Carolina Pitskova at the Miami Open yesterday. The 22-year-old will move into the world top 10, the first Australian to do so since Samantha Strosser in 2013 after 7-6-6-3 win. After a tightly contested first set, Ashley Barty dropped just five points in the final four games to seal victory. She hit a career-high 15 aces against Carolina Pliskova to earn a fourth title. Barty's victory continued her remarkable renaissance since returning to the sport in February 2016, having quit two years earlier to play professional cricket. Now the 2011 Wimbledon junior champion is celebrating her first WTA Premier Mandatory title, the tire of the tournaments below the Grand Slams and WTA finals and climbing to ninth in the rankings. Well, Chelsea staged a remarkable late revival to snatch a controversial victory at relegation, threaten Cardiff City and ease the intensifying pressure on boss Mario Zosavri. Chelsea controlled possession but did little with it as they were comfortably shackled by a disciplined Cardiff side during a goalless first half. The hosts uh, took the lead uh, less than a minute into the second period thanks to Victor Kamrasa, delicate curly volley. With five minutes left, uh, Keza as Puketa nodded in an equaliser form, a clearly offside position, and then in added time substitute, Ruben Loftus Cheek headed the winner to break Cardiff Hearts. And with that, we conclude this edition of First at Night. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.